Hey Pretty Girl Club, so today I'm going to talk about how to use light skinned privilege, how to use dark skinned privilege, what those are, and just kind of my opinions. Uh, disclaimer, this is an opinion based channel. Another disclaimer, if my channel enrages you or you don't like it, please click off, do not watch, please unsubscribe, please block me. Um, but I actually believe that all skin tone privileges are based on exoticism. And when I say exoticism, I mean... If you are in a community where you're the lightest or you're one of the one of the lightest or you're one of the darkest, you automatically stand out and people may exotify you if you are lighter than average or you're darker than average. And so this is why you see a lot of dark skinned black women saying to divest and go get with these non black men. And they'll say that those men love dark skinned women with 4C hair because what they're trying to do is utilize uh, dark skin privilege, which is the exoticism of being opposite of those phenotypes to their advantage. So I actually believe that the, that same privilege that they're talking about, that is the same privilege that light skinned black women can use with dark skinned black men or kind of in the black community um, with their skin tones standing out. It can cause people to exotify you. So that is what I believe that all skin tone privileges are based on. It is based on you looking different from the norm. Um, so if you have like a golden skin tone, obviously you look different from, from white people and you also look different from black people. Um, I don't believe that skin tone privilege exists on a spectrum. So for example, if you are light skin, you have more light skin privilege than someone who is one shade darker. Well, not necessarily because skin tones are subjective and also your skin tone privilege will depend on the environment that you're around. And so for the people who say, oh, if, if you date a non-black man and you are light-skinned, you're not going to have exotic privilege or like skin tone exoticism because your skin tone is closer to the white man. Well, that's false. Um, not only do I have people that I'm interviewing that prove that, but we, we know that that's false because if you look in the media, women with golden skin tones are still exotified just like anyone else. I don't think that one privilege is better than another. I just think that people from certain groups, they don't know what privileges they have and they don't know how to utilize those privileges. So if you want to use your skin tone privilege to your advantage, you have to get in an environment where there are going to be a lot of people without that skin tone because it's going to help you to stand out. So I've noticed that one disadvantage is that some people talk about tokenism. They say that tokenism is bad or like being the only person of color is bad. I strongly disagree with that. I have benefited so much from being the only person of color in like an all white environment, for example, because not only am I bringing diversity to that environment or I'm kind of breaking barriers, let's say there are all white people, instead of me saying, oh, I'm not going to try to work at that company. I'm not going to try to get a promotion because everybody's going to be white. I'm going to be the only person of color. Uh, first of all, that's good because it means I'm breaking barriers. And secondly, I can use my different phenotype to stand out from those people. I can offer a different perspective. Let's say this is like in the workplace or something. And also, I have actually used dark skin privilege to my advantage before. So uh, for reference, my Fenty shade is Fenty 300. But in the white community, obviously, I was the darkest person in my hometown and like in my school. And so I told you guys this story before about how I stood out a lot at the school for being the darkest, actually. And one thing that happened was like, they wanted me to be on the school's website. Um, people would remember me more. People remembered like interesting things about me or whatever. And another thing that happened was I told you guys the story about how when I was a teenager, I actually got a modeling contract. Literally, she said before she signed me, she said that I had the perfect skin tone and I could wear any color. Um, and I don't think that that was light skin privilege. I actually think that that was dark skin privilege in that case because the agency that I went to, it was in my hometown, which was all white. So I know that they didn't have people of my complexion that were trying out for that particular agency. This is also why you will often see in the modeling world, lots of darker skinned, um, unambiguous African women who are walking down these runways and stuff like that. That is because they are utilizing their dark skinned privilege to be seen on the runway. And you know, it looks very different. It stands out in a positive way. And you will see a lot of these designers 
putting these women in these bright colors and stuff like that because it really stands out against their skin tone. That's actually an example of privilege. Um, so I believe that any skin tone can have privilege. I don't think that every privilege is something where it's like you're harming somebody else by utilizing that privilege. No, you can actually utilize a privilege to open doors for other people who look like you. Think about all of the darker skinned Sudanese women who use their darker skin privilege to open the door for other Sudanese women to get into the modeling industry. And that's just one example. So skin tone privilege is really when your skin tone is seen as exotic by people who have a different skin tone than you. So if you're light skinned, people who are darker than you and lighter than you will see your skin tone as exotic. Uh, when I say light skin, I'm talking about golden skin tones. And then if you are darker skin, people who are lighter than you will probably view your skin tone as exotic. So you can use that exoticism to your advantage in terms of like pedestalizing your beauty or in terms of your pretty privilege, you can use that to have people recognize your beauty. So I actually, I don't, I don't have a problem with people finding certain skin tones beautiful. I really don't. Um, if you disagree with that, please unsubscribe from this channel because you probably won't like my content. Another aspect of skin tone privilege is the stuff that you do not have to go through. So for example, if you have a dark skin tone, you may not have to go through as many sunburns and peeling as somebody who has like a white skin tone. And by the way, I'm not saying that you can't get a sunburn, but your, your melanin um, gives you the privilege of not having to deal with as many problems when it comes to the sun. So an, a privilege of a lighter skin person is maybe you don't have to be told you're too dark for X, Y, Z, or, you know, I don't want to be seen with you because you're too dark skin or something like that. So every skin tone has different privileges in the sense of you don't have to deal with certain problems. And I've noticed that some people, they, they get mad because, you know, their particular skin tone comes with a different set of problems. By the way, every skin tone comes with certain advantages as well as disadvantages. So I've noticed that a lot of people, they tend to focus on the problems that come with dark skin tones, but they don't focus on the privileges that come with dark skin tones. Another privilege actually that I can think of that can come with being the darkest person in the workplace or just in your class or something like that is if you talk about somebody being colorist or racist against you, you are more likely to be heard. That is a form of privilege. So if you send an email at work saying, hey, so-and-so Karen was like being racist or being rude, people are more likely to look at you and believe you versus if you have a very white skin tone and then you say she was being rude to me because I'm white, that is not, you don't have the same level of privilege in that area. You don't have the same privilege of being heard when it comes to your suffering or discriminations because people associate lighter skin tones with being, uh, I guess, more privileged in certain scenarios. Here on this channel, I talk about the advantages and disadvantages of all of them. I try not to put one over the other or make it like, oh, this skin tone's at the bottom, this other skin tone's at the top. I don't believe in hierarchy mindsets, but I've noticed that that is definitely a privilege of somebody that has a deeper skin tone you get to be heard when it comes to the colorism conversation. People are more likely to want to listen to your side of the story. Notice how most of the colorism channels on YouTube, they are from dark skinned women, like the darkest of dark skinned women. I've even seen some dark skinned black women correct other women who are not as dark skinned as them saying, hey, I have more authority to speak on dark skinned experiences because I am more dark skinned or, you know, I have more authority to speak on the, the ills of, colorism because I have a darker skin tone. So that's actually one of the privileges if you want to be some sort of social justice type of person or an activist in that area, that's an advantage that you would have is people being more willing to listen to you as a person who has experienced disadvantages due to your complexion. One of the privileges of having a golden skin tone or people call it light skinned in the black community is um, you have relatability with people of other ethnicities because if you have kind of that golden skin tone range, when I say golden, I'm talking about maybe the Fenty 200s to Fenty 300s, somewhere in that range. Um, there are lots of people of other ethnic groups who have a similar skin tone. There are lots of other people who can maybe tan to your color. And so it makes you relatable to people all over the world. So 
maybe let's say you're a black person and you have this golden skin tone. If you go to different parts of the Philippines, you know, places in India, there are all types of different Asian countries or people with a Pacific Islander background or an indigenous background who can share your skin tone or your skin tone range. And so because your skin tone is more commonly found amongst many different ethnic groups, um, your relatability is something that is considered a privilege because people from other backgrounds can actually see a part of their phenotype in your skin tone. This is also why if you go to a lot of the convenience stores in the United States, back in the early 2000s, a lot of the foundation shades, you could find the golden foundation shades or kind of like these tan foundation shades, kind of these sandy or beige colored foundation shades because that skin tone and that skin tone range is very common across multiple different ethnic groups. And this is also why if you're in that skin tone range, um, you've got a lot of ambiguity because there are lots of different ethnic groups that have that exact skin tone, like lots of Latin American groups where they have that skin tone that you have or Pacific Islanders or whatever. So this is why you will get that question, what are you? And this is also why when you go into a convenience store, it might be easier for you to find your, fa your foundation. Um, now if that is changing. So, I mean, that's good that now a lot of the darker shades are found in those stores as well. But having a skin tone that is actually very commonly found all across the world, that is definitely a privilege because it makes you easy to blend in to those cultures or it makes those people feel sometimes safer with you. Um, same thing comes with having maybe like a multicultural type of background. People from other cultures may feel a little bit safer with you versus someone who doesn't know anything about their culture. So that's another privilege. But what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comments section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.